Good morning, good afternoon, or possibly good evening. My name is Dale McKay. I'm a staff technical marketing architect at VMware Carbon Black. Now, there's been a lot of announcements uh, from Carbon Black, in particular the XDR announcement. But one of the announcements that I wanted to take you through, because I think it's very relevant in the day-to-day -day operations, is a new feature that we have called CIS Benchmarks. I've got a couple of slides to take you through, and then I'm going to take you into the Carbon Black Cloud console and show you around CIS Benchmarks. Hey, thanks for watching, and I appreciate your time. All right, let's get started. I've got a couple of slides I want to walk you through first and just have a quick general discussion about CIS benchmarks. CIS benchmarks really are prescriptive configuration recommendations and they exist across a wide range of operating systems, environments, even some in, in some cases physical hardware. And that encompasses over 25 vendor, different vendor product families. And the way CIS benchmarks are created is it's a community effort. The vendor is uh, usually involved, although there's no requirement for the vendor to be involved. But I can tell you that from a personal perspective, I've been involved in helping establish benchmarks, in particular the vSphere 7 benchmark, through the collaborative effort that CIS or Center for Internet Security uses. So you get really the benefit of the community input plus the benefit of the vendor input to really arrive at what is a consensus recommendation for how things should be configured to provide the very best security that can be provided. Now, there are other VMware products that have done some CIS benchmarking, in particular uh, vRealize for operations, or I think now uh, it's ARIA operations. Uh, there is some CIS benchmarking in there. But what's different about what we've done here at VMware Carbon Black is that we presented all of this information on that same common console that you use for your Carbon Black Cloud environment. And I'm going to show you this a little bit later in a demo. Now there's some prerequisites that you should be familiar with. They're on the screen right there. Number one is the sensor version. It needs to be 390-2357 uh, or above. Right now the CIS benchmark offering that we have is only for Windows Server. And you can see the supported operating systems there, everything from 2012 to 2016, 2019, and 2022. And one more prerequisite is that all of the server OSs that you want to participate in CIS benchmarking must be part of an active directory domain. And we'll see this when we get into the demo. Just a couple of use cases where this might be important. You can see those use cases listed there. Obviously, compliance is a big deal for most uh, companies, in particular if you're a publicly traded company. And being able to quickly establish what your compliance is against a well-known compliance framework like CIS is really, I think, going to lessen a lot of the operational load in terms of being able to demonstrate that uh, compliance. Also, this is really just a great foundation security compliance check to make sure that you have done at least a, a minimal step towards securing the environment. Now, these benchmarks, again, are community developed through the process at Center for Internet Security. 
and it really does provide customers who may not necessarily have um, a big security staff the ability to take in those recommended configurations make that part of their turn up procedure and to check that compliance as they move through the life cycle of those particular servers. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. Okay, you can see I am logged into my Carbon Black Cloud console. I'm on the dashboard landing page. And one of the quickest ways to get started with CIS benchmarks is to, underneath the hardening, you'll see CIS benchmarks. And if I select that, that's going to take me to the main uh, landing screen, if you will, for CIS benchmarks. One of the first things that we want to talk about on this screen are the compliant non-compliant and excluded categories for our assets. You can see that in my particular case I have five assets. All of them are non-compliant. I have zero compliant assets. Let's click on the non-compliant and let's look at these five assets. And these are five servers that exist in my environment with the fictitious company Net gurus. You can see that there's a 2012 server. There's also multiple 2016 servers. And you can see that each one of these servers has a percentage of compliance associated with it. They're all roughly around that 30% number, a few more than others, and a few less than others. And you can see that they were last assessed well, about 24 hours ago. Now, let's take a look at this edit schedule function where I can actually schedule the frequency of the CIS benchmark assessment. You can see that we can do it daily, weekly, monthly, and I can do it basically whatever time I want it to be done. All right. So we can schedule the assessment. We can see that all five of my servers were recently assessed. We can see the operating system that's associated with those particular servers. And if I wanted to, I could look at a subset of my assessments just by selecting the OS. So let's take a look at what we see when we click on a particular server. What we're going to see is the CIS benchmarks. And you can see we start right here with this enforced password history is set to 24 or more passwords. That's a CIS benchmark recommended configuration. And you can see, obviously, we're OK with that one on this particular server. Maximum password age is set to 365 or fewer days, but not zero. And if I click on one of these, it brings up in the side window over here exactly what that configuration recommendation is about. And you can see in this particular case, this is a level one domain controller. And indeed, this is one of the domain controllers in my environment. And you can see it goes into a description of the policy. And you can understand the rationale behind that policy. You can understand the impact and then how to go about remediating that particular issue. Now, all of the benchmarks are over in what's called recommendation. And you saw that that filled in. You can see that. I have 50 per page. I have quite a few pages and actually have a total of 340 different recommendations or recommended configurations. Now, not all of these are going to necessarily apply 
and there are different sections that I can focus on. You can see all the different sections that are available that I can go and look at. You know, for example, I could, um, I don't know, let's, let's take one. Let's take a look at our, um, how about we look at our Windows updates and let's see what that looks like. And you can see I have four non-compliant servers. They're non-compliant when compared to these recommendations. Those three recommendations. Let's select something else. Let's take a look at my event service log. In fact, let's look at the system event log. And I can see again I have five non-compliant servers. Why? For this reason, the maximum log file is set to enable, and it's 32,768 or greater. Um, I also am not compliant with the recommendation that says the log file reaches the maximum size is set to disabled. Okay. Because I do control that log size. So the idea behind providing the CIS benchmarks is to allow customers, again, to take in that community knowledge that is present at Center for Internet Security and to really allow you to establish a baseline that can be verified, really, on a day-to-day -day basis, on a weekly basis, whatever it takes to validate the fact that you're in compliance or you're not on a particular recommended configuration. Again, all those benchmarks are available over here. If I go over here into recommendations, this is where I can see all of those recommendations and I can disable them if I so choose. Depending upon your particular environment, you may or may not want to utilize all of those particular benchmarks. Now, if I want to create a custom one, I could very easily go over to duplicate, duplicate that, and then modify it as I needed to for my particular environment. If I come back over to compliance, and I'm looking at my assets, I have the ability to export. If I export here, eventually when that file is ready for download, it will show up right here in my notifications. You can see it just showed up. I could go and download that file, and that file would give me each of the servers, its compliant percentage when it was last assessed, and the OS associated with it. I can do the same thing on the recommendation side. I can do an export here and export those recommendations. Now, the reason that I wanted to just spend a few minutes going through the CIS benchmarks is, again, I believe this allows organizations that may not have a huge security team or a huge security budget to begin formulating a baseline for security. And it's easily verified. It can be easily tracked through the export functions I showed you. And it can serve as a working document almost that as you increase your level of compliance with the CIS benchmarks, that can be noted both online through the Cardin Black Cloud Console and also offline through some archiving of those exported documents. All right. That really kind of concludes our walkthrough of the CIS benchmarks. Let's go back to our last slide. Okay, once again, I've just taken you through a new feature in the Carbon Black Cloud called CIS benchmarks. I hope that this has been beneficial to you. Uh, my name is Dale McKay. I'm a staff technical marketing architect at VMware Carbon Black, and I want to thank you again for your time, and I appreciate you watching this particular piece of enablement. Thank you.